And I was like, well, in New York, I, you know, I had a Viking in and a Toradol in a game and played lights out. He's like, well, we need to do that. Santana Moss, what's up, baby? What's up, my brother? How you doing, baby? How you living? I'm good, man. How are you? I can't complain. Oh, I can't complain. Now, people know you for your football play. What about your pool play, man? What's up? I got a little something. Oh, now, <laughs> when you have a pool table in your house, you can't say you don't know how to play. Exactly. You just might not be a pro. Let's see what you can do. We got a, yeah, yeah. We got a stick right there for you. Go ahead and break it for us. You made one of these. White ball went over there. So in 2005, you're in Washington. What was your relationship like with Dan Snyder? And what stories do you have with Dan Snyder? The relationship was there. You know, one of the things I learned early he loved all his guys, but if you was the guy that laid on the line for him, he really loved you. And I remember 07. Tell me what happened. You know, I'm sitting in the uh, training room, banged up hill, after playing the Jets, playing my old team. And never seen Dan Snyder in the training room ever in my life since I've been a Redskin. And he walks down and like, you, you, you're playing this week. And you know what week it was? It was Cowboys week. <laughs> that's, that's why he was in that training room. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, well, it's a possibility I can be out there. I got to see if something's going to work. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what you need? And I was like, well, in New York, I, you know, I had a Viking in and a Toradol in a game and played lights out. He's like, well, we need to do that. He's like, miss these days of practice and Friday we're going to try it. So um, Friday comes and they, they cut my shoe out to make sure I can fit my foot in it because the heel is just so sore and big. I can't put nothing on it. Mm -hmm. And I take my, I spat my shoe up, I spat it to my foot so I can keep the shoe on. And I go out there Friday, I'm um, probably 50%. But it's Friday practice. Friday practice is like a modified walkthrough, which is not, but you want to get a good sweat. And you already told me you talked to Portis. Around DC, now that we've done playing, we talk about these, these Henny games we done had. This famous shot game, the Henny game. You know, it was just, if we had one of those games, like, man, I gotta go ball out. Cheers, and we out. That game going to the Cowboys, I had to do more than a shot. I remember going to the game so paranoid. Let me just go ahead and drink a little more. How much is more? Normally, what I would do and what we was doing, we had a shot. This particular game, I literally took my Gatorade bottle out there, I finished drinking the Gatorade, went into my book bag, and I had my, always had a little Henny. It was probably like a personal. The little, little, uh, <laughs> the little person who, and VSOP. You can't just say Henny without saying the VSOP, because you had to have that one that had a little um with it. Mm -hmm. I opened it and I poured it into my Gatorade bottle. How much Hennessy filled up halfway, that Gatorade bottle? Halfway. All right. To me, halfway was too much, and I didn't think that I would drink that much. But you by the time, whole thing? by the time I got to the locker room, it was almost, almost gone. Wow. I get out there on the field and I didn't take the bike and the turtle all yet and I'm bouncing on this doggone cowboy field. I'm just, and Dan out there early. And he's like, how you feel? I'm like, I'm ready to go. But they don't know <laughs> why I feel like this. <laughs> they think it's a tour on the bike then. <laughs> now I took the first bus to get over there before everybody else so I can really test this hill out. Now the second bus, the third bus done got there. All the guys, they see me in a the locker. They like, oh, Tanner man back. We got 89. As I get out there to go out there with the team, that feeling I had before done wore off. So I'm like, I need this turtle and this dog on, you know, biking in. So wait, you drank half a bottle of Hennessy. Mm -hmm. Oh, you drank half, half, half a that. Gatorade bottle of Hennessy. Yeah. And then you took biking in the turtle? So the biking in the turtle came after I realized that that hill wasn't going to hold up the whole four quarters. <laughs> I'm already starting to feel the effects of it, getting ready to go back in there before we come out, you know, for the coin toss. Mm -hmm. The feeling that I had pregame before the, the little pain kicked in, it zoned me out so much. Like, I literally heard a pin drop in the nosebleed. I was in the zone. And I knew, I was like, this could either be trouble for me or trouble for the opposing person that's the line up in front of me. So what ended up happening? So that game was like, a, like no other, man. I ended up having one of the better games of my career against the Cowboys, rather. Had 100 some yards of touchdown. And this was being removed from two weeks prior. I didn't play in the two games prior and had a chance to win the game at the end again. If Jason bring that ball down a little bit lower, I'm catching the post in the back of the end zone to beat these guys again on the last play. But it didn't work out that way, but I ended up went out there and laid it on the line for the team and the owner. What did, what did Dan Snyder say to you after you played that game? He just knew it was the die. He didn't, he didn't know nothing about what transpired before the Toradol and the Viking, 
But he's like, I appreciate that. Like, man, you know what? That that was big of you. And leaving that game, you know, everybody appreciated me a little more. Like, Tanner, man, you went out there and took one for the team, and we appreciate you for that, especially the owner. What are your thoughts on Tordal? How do you um, feel about using that, and, and now that you know the effects of it, what do you think about still it? Not, still not 100% sure of the effects. Uh, but I know that it was guys that had a lot to say about it that that was the reason, or they was addictive to it, and that was some of the reasons why they was fighting to kind of ban it. Um, it's crazy because by the last four or five seasons of my career, they was taken away. So <laughs> remember I just told you I feel like I couldn't play without her? Oh, now I have to play without her. It was taken away. So, you know, one of the things I say about this game, we walk into this game knowing what some of the things that we're going to deal with, whether it's going to be uh, the rest of our lives or just for that moment. And so I feel like some of this stuff comes with the game. So we got to just suck it up and whatever allows us to play the game, as long as it's not illegal, you got to do what you do. Hey man, you nice bro. Got a little something in me. You about to bust my ass right now. <laughs> Thanks for kicking it with us. Subscribe to BR to check out more dope videos like this one.